As we think about the last decade in Florida politics, what are the major trends and shifts that you've seen from a political and policy lens? And similarly, what role have you seen DeSantis playing in some of these shifts? Thank you. Um, so I'm an organizer, so I want to start with a quick organizing story, story um, Kyle. Um, Kyle is a veteran um, in Jacksonville. He is a single dad. Um, he used to be homeless and live in his car. And he would like wake up with a crick in his neck and like peel himself off the vinyl to like get to work. Um, and Kyle, during the housing crisis that has um, skyrocketed over the last five years, um, is terrified that he is going to lose his apartment and become homeless again, um, that they can jack up his rent $500 from one month to the next. Um, and when we knocked on Kyle's door, he was really excited to join the Justice on Every Block campaign. Um, and he helped push in Jacksonville um, for us to establish renter protections at the local level. And just last month, Kyle joined over 100 of our members from 10 counties in Tallahassee and shared his story in House and Senate committees. And, you know, Kyle, I was talking to him after the day and he's like, you know, they, they're going to pass this bill um, to stop rent prevent us from winning rent stabilization like we passed in Orlando this year that the Realtors Association litigated and blocked. Um, they're they're going to stop 60 day notice before a rent hike, um, but they can't take away everything that we've learned. And this weekend, Kyle and his daughter Ade are knocking on doors for a new mayor in Jacksonville, Donna Deegan, this weekend. And I share that like organizing story because Ron DeSantis, his attacks on democracy, his attacks on every issue we care about can seem overwhelming. Like the right, the massive right-wing infrastructure in Florida can seem daunting. And sometimes we can forget that they're really just co-opting organizing strategies. They're co-opting the strategies we have developed in Black and Latino communities, in working class neighborhoods, and they're investing in them over the long term um, to pull people along to their worldview, um, to hate and to division. Before Ronald DeSantis was elected, he was speaking at white supremacist gatherings. He was race baiting during his campaign. He uses power to consolidate power. Um, he under like when when we passed Amendment Four to give 1.4 people with felony con convictions their voting rights back. He did everything he could to undermine it and undermine their voting power. Um, gerrymandering maps, taking elected people uh, elected people who were elected to office out of office because of something they said, attacking groups like Florida Rising that does voter registration. Um, you know, so I think first it's really important for us to name like to those who think he is less dangerous than Trump or to people who think, oh, he's less likely to win. We cannot afford to underestimate Ronald DeSantis and organizations in Florida understand that better than anyone. Um, but what I want to emphasize is that in Florida, we are organizing um, every week. There are organizations that are going out and meeting people like Kyle and bringing them into our movements. There are student walkouts. There are marches. There are protests. There have been Wake Up Wednesday events every week across the state of Florida since legislative sessions started. And this week, I think I um, over 100 schools uh, have committed to doing high school walkouts and college walkouts. Um, and protests in multiple cities. Um, next Wednesday, the Poor People's Campaign is launching a, a four-day march um, from Havana, Florida to Tallahassee. Um, the week after that, towards the end of our legislative session, it's going to get real with escalated actions and as young people um, and, and others join them to say they can't ban us. Um, and next year, with your support, we will win an abortion rights ballot initiative. We can kick out Senator Rick Scott and project, protect a Democratic majority at the U.S. Senate. Um, I often remind our team that we're at the front lines. This is California during Prop 187. This is Arizona during SB 1070. And just because we're here now doesn't mean that we stay here. Like this is not our destiny in Florida. And I truly believe it's organizers who are going to get us to the other side. And I'm so grateful to MVP for sharing that belief and for investing in long-term organizing and local organizations and state-based organizations. Your support really means the world to us. And um, you're about to hear from some fire organizers.